hi yeah I'm going to show you this makeup look from scratch today and in particular in this video there are some tips on how to widen and brighten the appearance of a hooded eye shape so I hope you enjoy. As always, all of the products I've used are listed in the description. So if you click to make the video full screen, the title will come up along the top. Click the arrow next to it and a full list will drop down. Okay, I'm going to start with a little layer of Your Skin But Better foundation all over. And I'm going to use a PC15 brush. Now this is a little bit kind of, um, what is the word I'm looking for? It's a bit more fluffy than what I would usually use to apply my foundation. And I'm hoping that will give me a bit of a softer finish. Um, I started picking at things that weren't there just before I decided to do my makeup. So obviously that was a really great idea. Um, but you know what? I was thinking, oh gosh, that looks red. I'll give it a minute. And then I thought, well, no, I won't because under normal circumstances, you won't have time to give it a minute. And we've all been there, haven't we? Where you pick something and then the next thing you're wondering, okay, why have I done that? But I have done it. And how can I just diffuse the appearance? So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm also today, I'm going to go through some kind of iconic MAC eye colours. I'm really looking forward to doing that. But what I'm trying to train myself into is using a bit of a softer base. Um, you know now that the weather is going to be a bit nicer and we'll probably be sat outdoors more. I don't want to necessarily have a really full coverage on, but I still want coverage on the areas of redness. And so this is what I did yesterday, actually. I'm going to go in with a little touch of Bye Bye Redness. This is from It Cosmetics as well. And basically, I'll take a little bit out and put it on the back of my hand. Can I just say you are going to spot that all the way through the video? It's a fake tan disaster. Um, and I'm just going to use a little small brush and pat this on. I mean, first port of call is defo where I've been picking. But then I'm just going to pat a little bit of this anywhere that I know I'm prone to be in a little bit more red. And then just by using a really soft touch, it will hopefully be a bit less obvious because everything else is a bit fresher. But I've loaded on a bit more support where I know I'm going to need it as the day goes on. And that's a really important thing I'd say to you to take from any of these videos. You know, I have spent the last year now just doing my own face. And so I'm so used to where my redness is going to show through. I'm so used to tailoring this to what I need but you know your skin better than I do. So if you know that you have a patch of something that flares up in a certain area, customise all these tips to suit what's going to feel great for your skin. Um, okay, I'm going to quickly do my brows and then we'll go on to eyes. Okay, I'm just doing a few touches to prep my eyes for some makeup. I'm going in with the Peaches and Cream Eyeshadow Primer and I've already gone in with the liner in Papyrus. Um, that liner on me, it's kind of like a peachy, um, fair colour. Now, what I would say, Kelly, you had asked me recently, like, what is the benefit of using like a light coloured eyeliner? I would just say, whatever complexion you have, if you find a liner in a similar colour to that and take it along the waterline, that's going to help to knock out any redness, just brighten the whole eye and neutralise everything. Um, I know that looks a bit bright on me at the moment, but when I do the rest of my makeup, that's going to come together. And then a little note on eyeshadow primers. Um, if you're finding that your eyeshadow creases or doesn't last very well, it's really well worth adding that primer step in. This one is kind of dewy to the touch. So I'm actually going to seal it into place with a little bit of setting powder. Um, this is my It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores. But what this will do is create a really great base for your eyeshadows to stick to and help to prevent um, the impact of oil disrupting your eyeshadow as well. So I'm just going to take my powder over the lids and then I'm going to get cracking on my eye makeup. And also the reason why I always do the pencil first is I like to kind of pull the lid out of the way so I can really get in there. And I don't want to disrupt any shadows I'm about to put on. Now, is this the right colour? Yes. So, ages ago, it was a really long time ago, but do scroll back and find it. Sally Hughes asked, 
what is your favourite powder shadow of all time? And this was just in an Instagram post. And the comments were absolutely fascinating. Like so many people said a MAC shade. Like mine is Antiqued by MAC. Um, so I was reading all these comments, loving it. It was such a great throwback as well because loads of the colours. I think I might have mentioned to you before, when I first started doing makeup, I was being taught by Kate and Nicola at Peaches. And what they used to do every week was get me things from a kit. So my whole kit was from MAC. Um, and like loads of the colours that were coming up were things that have been in my kit since back then and I still love now. But anyway, one of the colours I've never tried before and I was looking at it thinking, well, why has this passed me by? Is this one and it's Naked Lunch, this kind of pearly oyster colour. Um, and I've never used it before, so I've been wanting to use it. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing how it looks with the whole thing. Now, I'm also going to go in with, have I got it here? Soft Brown. This was a classic that I love. It's just kind of a soft... <laughs> soft brown it's just a really soft tan kind of color that is great for the likes of me through my socket it's a few shades deeper than my natural complexion and it's give a, gonna give a really natural looking contour however a bit like the liner tip what i would say to you is whatever your natural complexion looks like just go a few shades deeper than that and you will always find a color that looks lovely in your socket now neaty you were asking me for some tips for particularly hooded eyes and there's a few things I would say first of all that brightening eyeliner is going to be great to kind of widen and brighten the eyes but also so I'm going through the lids at the moment and I'm just adding this kind of contour in here but what I would say in particular with hooded eyes is don't forget to utilize all of the other spaces around your eyes so for example I'm going through the socket here and while I'm here, I suppose it makes sense to say that, you know, if I were to go through the crease, I think lots of us just naturally go through a crease. But then if I frown, there would have been loads of space there that I could have used. So I personally find where that line naturally is and I go above it. So that even when I'm resting, you can see all of these colours. But what I would also say to you is... Make the most of the brow bone and make the most of this space under the eye because you can get loads of colour in there. So that in mind, I'm going to take, where are we? Another classic satin taupe. I'm going to take this under the eye line and I might take a little bit of it um, just in the corners as well. I should look at you rather than looking in the mirror. And you see, this is a great little area of real estate that you can be, if you've got a colour that you love and you want to make sure it looks really central in your makeup, then get it under here. And also, if you were to use a colour that was in some way clashing with your eye colour or like the opposite to your eye colour, it's going to make your eye colour look even brighter. Now, I'm just going to flick the edges out of this slightly and match this back up along the top. I'm not gonna do any um, sharp eyeliner or anything like that, but I am just gonna frame this whole thing. Might look a bit um, suspect for now, but if you stay with me, we will work this out. And again, I'm adding a little flick in here that's gonna follow the trace of above that natural crease. Because it's funny, actually, speaking of Kate and Nick, that was one of the things they had to really drum into me. I'll never forget me and Nicola really laughing. I always wanted to follow the lines and go through the creases. And she was like, but you're making these teeny tiny smoky eyes on people. And like the actual shapes of it, I'd grasped. But I was, the places where I was putting my brush was leading to everyone's eyes looking small, even though, you know, in theory, I was getting the grasp of like, you need this colour to blend into this one. God, I wonder how they actually had the patience for me. But anyway, we were really laughing about these teeny tiny smokes. Um, so going above all of those lines is going to just build everything up and out, which is what we want. 
Now I'm just going to add, I'm still using the satin taupe here, just adding a bit of smokiness to these outer corners. Also, can I just say, I'm looking at this and it's reminding me, obviously it's not going to be suitable for everyone and everyone's taste, but as a sweeping generalisation rule, those kinds of taupe colours are a really lovely option for anyone that wants smoky that doesn't feel too overpowering because it's just on the fresh side of a smoky eye. So give it a little try if you want a softer alternative. Okay, I haven't used this in a while. I think it's brilliant. Okay, just I'm quickly, quickly while that's drying, I went in with my Give Me Some bronzer from MAC. And um, the mascara. And I think if you're someone that's noticing that you want more fullness to the eyelashes, if you want a really separated lash look, um, it's really great to have this additional primer step. And then on the same brush, I'm going in with a little bit of blush in Like Me, Love Me. And then I'm just going to go in with my fingertips for this one. This is the cream colour base in Hush. Now, the cream colour base is this lovely kind of creamy, soft finish that you can use, you know, all over the complexion. And they've got various shades. So again, find something that feels like a similar match to your own complexion, a bit fairer than, and you'll be left with a really natural looking highlighter. One of the things I really love about Hush is it's not glittery, but it just looks like healthy skin. Okay, let's finish off these lashes. And there we go, that's after with the mascara on top. And you know what? That's one thing I actually really miss about doing other people's makeups. It can be really difficult at the start of a makeup, in particular if you're doing your eyes before your base, which I always tend to do with people because you want to be able to get the eyes perfect, then wipe away any mistakes and then do a flawless complexion. But the thing with that is, like, if I didn't have my complexion on before I did that makeup and then I'd put that really bright eyeliner on and then some really dark colours, it can feel really dramatic. But then when you see everything in the context of a wider makeup, it makes a bit more sense. So I suppose what I'm saying is if you're trying any new things or want to try a new trend um, and you want to see whether it's going to suit you, wait until your whole makeup is done before you make a decision. Because if you just put that one step on it, it might look really bright but then by the time you finish the whole thing you might end up loving it okay to finish everything off i'm going in with charlotte tilbury pillow talk lip liner and then the pillow lip solid serum in marvelous Well, there you go, all done. I hope you enjoy. And as always, if there's anything in particular you want to see a video on, let me know in the comments section here and I'll come back to you. Have a lovely weekend and I'll talk to you soon.